Hello again folks, uh, this video is part one of probably a couple of videos showing you how to build your own bench power supply. Uh, we're going to be using readily available, uh, relatively cheap components available from the likes of AliExpress and eBay and um, hopefully the end result is going to be a fairly attractive, fairly cheap uh, and hopefully functional uh, bench power supply that's going to be perfect for the, the hobbyist workbench. Um, yeah, so I thought we'd take a look at the components, do a little bit of, a little bit of in, initial testing, and uh, then get on with the actual build itself. Um, so the build's probably going to be in part two, um, but we'll we'll see how it goes. So, um, of course, the the main advantage of building it yourself is cost. Um, now, hopefully, this should come in fairly cheap. Uh, when compared to buying a purpose-built off-the-shelf bench power supply, um, but I won't mention cost and and, and that just now. Uh, we'll wait till it's built and it's working, uh, and then we'll talk about cost and see what's a comparable uh, off-the-shelf bench power supplies uh, we can get for the same money, if any. Um, but the other advantage other than cost is, of course, the fact that you've built it yourself. Um, if something fails on it, you can replace the individual part that has failed you've built it you know how it went together you know where you got your parts from you know and if, if something goes wrong you can just buy uh, that individual component rather than having to send you know a purpose-built bench power supply off to the manufacturer for repair or or having to shell out for a complete new unit if you if you you know you goose it so without further ado let's have a look at the components uh, the first thing and probably the most important part is the the interface that we're going to use to to adjust the output voltage and current etc uh, and you may have seen me do a mini review on this before it's the rd tech um, dp 20 v 2a uh, power supply module um, the module number 20 v 2a stands for 20 volts 2 amps um, and that's obviously going to be the maximum output of this bench power supply you can buy um, different models uh, if you just again look at the the, the, the model number I think it goes up to 50 volts, 5 amps, so that would be the 50V5A uh, DP at the front, obviously. Um, but yeah, these are really nice little modules. Um, there is an element of uh, voltage drop uh, as it's using a buck converter, so um, it does need, I think, 1 or 2 volts above uh, the output um, for it to function correctly. So if you, if you want to use the full 20 volts, you will need to be inputting at least a 22 volts kind of thing and um, the maximum it can handle is 23 volts um it'll basically burn itself out according to the manufacturer if, if you're using sort of 24 volts that kind of thing so yeah really nice little uh units you can get these on aliexpress um i think rd tech they actually design manufacture and sell them exclusively themselves um so uh, you can get them elsewhere but it's probably easier and cheaper to go direct to manufacturer uh, via AliExpress. Anyway, enough of that. Um, so 20 volts. Um, so we need 22, 23 volts input. Um, we can't really easily get that sort of power supply off the shelf cheaply. You probably can get them, but they're going to be expensive because they're a bit more niche. So what we're going to be using for this project is a 24 volt power supply. This is a 5 amp uh, output 24 volt power supply and it's fairly nice quality um, aluminium folded aluminium uh, it's been used as a heat sink in there as you can see in there um, and we've got screw terminals with a little protective cover on there a little clip on cover live neutral earth uh, we've got two commons two uh, plus voltage and we do have a voltage adjust so i'm hoping that this uh, voltage adjust is fairly coarse and we can get a good range i hope it's just not maybe half a volt either way or 24 volts because if it is then this probably won't be suitable we'll have to look at uh, another option so um yeah that's the two sort of main components uh, as you would expect um we're obviously going to need an enclosure uh, and i'm using this one don't know if I showed you in a previous video, uh, but it's, it comes in two halves, uh, and we've got nice little end plates on there as well. It comes with the screws and the feet, of course. Um, you can easily get these uh, off eBay. In fact, this is where I got this particular one. Um, so this is going to be ideal. There's enough space if we look at it top down here to have a power supply in that way. Uh, there's going to be enough clearance for the. Uh, 
uh, wires coming out the the back of the unit and of course we're going to need uh, a means of inputting uh, mains in uh, and what i've done is i've just uh, recycled uh, an iec socket soldered on some uh, you know mains cable and used some 41 heat shrink just to insulate those um, and that will again fit in there with uh, plenty of clearance uh, which is going to be quite nice uh, i think it's going to look fairly good um we will have to grind these posts off to, to mount it and, and we'll, we'll look at how we're going to mount that later on, uh, probably in part two. Um, and of course, all those components are, are fine as they are, but we need a means of getting a DC voltage out for our project. And we've got a couple of options. Um, I've got a few different types of binding posts here. These ones came from CPC. Um, I don't think that's a putty grey colour, or you know, sort of, you know, light grey colour, goes particularly well with uh, with the black because everything else is a charcoal grey, if you like. Um, so we've got these type of binding posts. These are fairly cheap. You can get these off AliExpress again for uh, well, you know, minimal cost, a few few pence, in fact. Um, good thing about these ones is you can screw them out and put in a bare wire or bare conductor and then tighten it down uh, otherwise you're going to have to use a 5 mil banana uh, banana socket so another option is this type um, the shrouded type the type, type of thing you're going to get on a multimeter that kind of thing and some power supplies um, downside of these ones is of course you can't screw down a bare conductor it has to be on a you know a 5 mil plug sorry a 4 mil banana uh, plug but um, we do have the option um, of using something like this uh, I use this on mother bench power supply um, you know it's a five mil uh, banana plug on a crocodile clips and it's quite easy just for hooking up uh, you know circuits and, and that kind of thing you've seen me use them uh, to power uh, the little electronics kits I do but yeah the only downside is you can't screw those down uh, so I was digging about, those were my, my main three options, and then in my parts bin I found uh, these ones which actually came off the back of a uh, an audio amplifier. Um, now these do accept, as you'd expect, 4mm uh, banana plugs, like so, uh, but they do have the added benefit of having uh, an increased diameter on the, uh, the screw down part of it, so... Um, and they've got a nice a spacer and uh, I just think that this is probably going to be the, bit, the nicest option it's going to look more professional I think um, and it's a bit more chunkier and yeah I think this will be quite nice so uh, looking at the front panel then what it's going to look like is going to be the obviously power supply module there I'm going to probably put the output on the left um, you can obviously do it to suit yourself. You could have it in the middle um, with a power switch here. or In fact, I think I might do that. I might think have this dead centre, have the output on the left and a power switch on here. Of course, you don't need a power switch, but if you want to, you can do that. Um, cool. So um, I think what we'll do first of all is actually test the power supply and see what it's outputting. So we'll go ahead and, and do that. Uh, as I say, I've already prepped this. I've got uh, tinned the ends here, as you can see, so they're ready just to be screwed into the the, uh, the power supply itself. So I'll just slacken off these screws, and it's live neutral earth, so I will just uh, pop those in the appropriate connectors or terminals, I should say. So those were live. Neutral and off. And there we go. And we've got the um, we've got dual output on this, so um, I'm just gonna miss that first common out, and just not that it'll matter, um, but you know, just give a bit of separation from the mains and putting the, the DC output. Um, it's probably a bit overkill, but you know, if you've got that option, then it's obviously worth taking it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, clip these on. That should be secure enough. There we go. Happy days. Um, 
obviously unplug your cable first uh, and then we'll put our mains in like so I'll bring in the multimeter put it on uh, DC voltage it's auto range in this so just uh, yeah obviously if yours is different uh, you may have to put it to uh, the 100 volt range something like that pop that in like so and then we'll turn it on and see what it does out the box. Now, I think I mentioned before, it does have a voltage adjust. So hopefully we want to be able to take this down to around 22, 23 volts, something like that. So plugging it in now, we get a little uh, green LED. And out the box, 24.1819. That's fairly good. Um, so, yeah, let's see if we can adjust it uh, to get it more in the range, let's say about 22, 23 volts. Um, I think if I can get it a 22.9, that would be sort of ideal, but let's see how, how it works. So if I turn it clockwise, that's taken it up, uh, and let's just see what it actually goes up to. So, almost 30 volts, 29.8 so it is fairly coarse. We can take it all the way down to 21.1516, something like that. So that's excellent. We can adjust it to the required voltage. So I'll just tweak this round clockwise. And we'll take it, there's 23. So I went quiet, I'm concentrating. Obviously a screwdriver isn't ideal for this, you really want a little adjustment tool, but yeah, that'll do, 22.85, something like that. It's like filling your petrol or your, your gas if, you were, if you're American, yeah. You always try to get it bang on, whatever, you know, $20 or £20, something like that. Um, yeah, but that's gonna be, that's gonna be perfect. That's, uh, you know, two, two volts above the, or two and a bit volts above the maximum output so that looks uh, like it'll be pretty good so uh, yeah i think that's pretty much it for part one uh, that's about 12 minutes now so yeah i don't want to labor on too much um so the next part of the video will be the actual construction of the unit um you know putting it together and uh, hopefully testing at the end um, so, if you enjoyed uh, part one, please give me the thumbs up, uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, and I'll see you next time uh, for part two. Until then, guys, take care of yourselves and all the best.